Here's a pop quiz. What do these three things have in common? A barcode scanner, a cell phone, and a computer mouse. Yes, they are all electronics, but they also all use laser technology to function. I, I think if you just pick a topic, I can probably find where there's a laser used in it. We're all pretty familiar with the word laser, right? But what does it actually mean? Dr. Reginald Farrow, a research professor at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, explains that the word laser is actually an acronym for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. The first and last letter, the light and the radiation, are actually the same thing. All the light that you see comes from an atom giving off radiation. Inside a laser is a material. It could be a solid, liquid, or gas. The atoms of that material need to be excited or stimulated in order for light to be produced. Mirrors on either end cause the light to bounce back and forth inside the laser cavity until there's enough energy for the light to exit the laser. What makes laser light different from other forms of light? The answer can be found in the middle part of the word, amplification by stimulated emission. You want to organize the light. And so the way we do that is we get the, we get the atoms to give off their light all at the same time. There you go. Take Check a look at a regular light inside your classroom or house. All right, homework. What do you notice about it? Once you flip the switch, the light scatters and bounces off the walls. By comparison, the light emitted by a laser is very narrow and travels in the same direction so it can be concentrated on one tiny spot. Farrow demonstrates the laser level, a tool used by engineers and contractors on a regular basis. If you're doing construction, how would you draw a straight line over a hundred foot distance that has to be perfectly straight? The laser level will allow you to draw a very straight line and position something along that straight line knowing that you're doing that more accurately than you could do it in any other way. Lasers can be powerful enough to cut through metal or delicate and precise enough to perform surgery. Eye doctors, called ophthalmologists, use lasers to remove cataracts and even to reshape the cornea of the eye to improve someone's vision, a procedure known as LASIK surgery. Do you know one of the most common uses of lasers worldwide? That's right, lasers are used to make and read the information on CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs, one of the most important applications for consumers around the world. But Farrow says the biggest application for the laser is in high-speed communications. When you answer a call on your cell phone, your voice travels, at least part of the distance, by laser light. They basically can break your voice up into very small bits and send that down an optical fiber, which is about as thin as a human hair. And they can send your voice over thousands of miles that way. Farrow worked at Bell Laboratories, the same place where the laser was invented in 1958, until he moved on to the New Jersey Institute of Technology. From the checkout line to the research lab, there are countless areas where lasers are used today. The laser and Farrow says there are seemingly endless opportunities for innovation in the years to come. There are many opportunities in the field of lasers that we don't even know about. We always need somebody to look at a problem in a completely new way in order to get improvements, and in order to become innovative in this area. It has not all been done yet. So, perhaps a career in laser technology lies in your future. Meanwhile, do some research and then make a list of five items that you use regularly that contain lasers.